Williams and Clint Finley. Guys, welcome back into the cube from uh, yesterday. You had a good day. What's your, how was your day like? Yeah, I'm really excited you guys could make this trip, and uh, we got a great team here today. So, uh, what did you guys see? You're out there scouring the Start landscape off, here. Alex. What's the stories here? Top yeah, stories today. Yeah, we, well, we're just putting together just kind of our analysis of the event, and we're pinpointing five trends that we're really seeing here. You know, one is uh, the growth of, of Hadoop, but the concerns about the ecosystem, and perhaps there's you know some concern about forking or some kind of mutation. Uh, training, ease of use is another uh, trend that we're definitely seeing. Uh, DevOps, what would you add to that, Clint? Uh, real time, people are really interested in how to do real time with, with Hadoop uh, using H streaming or H base. And, I, and, and, and definitely, you know, the whole question about the, you know, the open source community and how that, and that, how that is developing as, uh, as we saw in Doug Cutting's keynote this morning. So we're out there, you guys are out, we're obviously covering the, the, the industry in general, the tech industry, services angles doing great, you guys are writing some great content up there. We saw our news hitting Silicon Angle site today, a lot of great stories. What, what do you guys see this show and Hadoop in particular impacting the rest of the industry? Uh, any observations you have uh, we'd like to share uh, as you talk to folks in the hallway here? Yeah, uh, I, I, I'll, I spoke to a few people out in the hallway today in particular, I had an interesting conversation with a uh, company called Travel uh, Travel Sailing, and another one, a conversation with uh, Travel uh, Travelocity, and the Travelocity uh, developer said that they are looking at HBase to do better real-time analysis on advertising to get to optimize both their their marketing and their personalization. Uh, <clears throat> the, the, the other fellow uh, was talking about how they are starting to build better measurements inside uh, big online retailers such as Toys R Us with Hadoop so they can uh, tweak their algorithms more so they can get to really help their clients understand their, their marketing dollars. And so those are two examples. I think also what we're seeing is how big data is being used for real-time analysis to add features to products to add features to, to applications, to do that kind of that real-time development. Clint, you know, we had a comment here on theCUBE uh, from the guy from Cisco, uh, Jason, and uh, he said, you know, Jacob. this is Jacob, Jacob, and he said this is a great show. A lot of technical people here, very engaged community, so, you know, the sessions are well attended, um, great questions. Um, what are you seeing from a tech crowd? What are the hot, trends here inside the show from a tech perspective? Well, I, I've been seeing DevOps happening right before my eyes, basically, uh, mm -hmm. with de developers and ops guys just uh, having lunch together, from, sometimes from different companies, and talking about uh, just swapping stories about how to make Hadoop work better, and uh, how to make DevOps happen, and uh, educating each other. Uh, so it's, as it was, it's been really exciting to see that Hadoop really is necessitating DevOps. It's making DevOps something that's, that isn't optional, because if you're going to do Hadoop, you have to have your developers and your and your operations team like working really closely together. You've got to have your operations team doing agile uh, deployments, using automated tools, stuff like that. DevOps could be what transforms IT. It really could. I mean, that it's just, you really need a whole new set of talents to be able to, to, to monitor these multi-tenant uh, infrastructure. Talk about what you mean by DevOps, right? Some people may not be familiar with the term, so maybe you could describe it. How would you define it, Clint? There's a few aspects to it. Uh, one of the quick ways to, to explain <clears throat> it is it's applying the agile methodology from development to operations. The, what that ends up looking like is that you, A, have your, de your developers and your operations people working much more closely together instead of being completely siloed. That doesn't mean that your uh, system administrators are writing code, but that they have a really good idea of what the developers are doing, and vice versa, the developers need to have a better idea of what the impact of pushing out new code is and making changes uh, are so that, uh, the, so that operations can get new changes out quickly. It also involves a lot of uh, using new tools that enable system administrators and operations people to work more like developers work by using automated automation, by using scripting tools, uh, doing things that let them focus more on creatively solving problems instead of putting out fires. It's a, it's a cultural movement too, without a doubt. The people who are doing it are part of, they feel like they're part of an independent culture inside IT. 
So yeah. it's, a, it's like a pro programmable infrastructure in a sense. Um, and Doug Cutting said today that when he's not coding, he feels like he's not being productive. And then, so hence your cultural angle here. I think Alex, it goes right? back to too, what we heard uh, yesterday from Jeff Hammerbacher when he was talking about data scientists and how data scientists are kind of like gym rats. They're data rats, right? I mean, you just, you just get immersed in it. And I think that's part of the DevOps culture. Well, Facebook, we had Jonathan Gray on uh, as well. And who, what he was saying was, at Facebook, there is no distinction between ops and engineering in that you know, engineering is ops and ops is engineering. And yeah. absolutely, there's no silos. It's like they are working together, um, clearly. And, and, and you know, Doug Gourlay, Dave, just mentioned on theCUBE that you know, configuring networking gear has been an ops thing. You know, it's been manual. And uh, the, now with cloud and you want to provision you know, infrastructure, you can actually do it automatic. So I, I think automation is, a big part of that as well. Yeah, and virtualization, because now you can actually have virtual network switches, and you can, uh, and of course, you have, for years now, we've had virtual uh, servers as well. If you think about like our coverage of the HP uh, Moonshot, right? I mean, that's a machine now that has 280 servers on a blade, and you can have thousands of servers in this box, it's energy efficient. The ARM chip was designed for off, then on, versus just on, then turn off. So what, you, what you're going to see is the ability to, to manage cores Right. like resources, which is a programmatic issue, right? So now you have the notion that, hey, I can spin up um, clusters uh, to do that. Now, I just talked to Eli um, uh, Collins at Cloudera earlier on, we did a segment, I saw your uh, Skype about uh, Big uh, Big Top. Was mm -hmm. that, did, you just, did you Skype me on, oh, was it? Yeah, I was just asking about Big Top. Yeah, so Big Top, he came in and actually did a quick segment yeah. describing an open source project, and uh, he was also informing me that uh, were, which is, uh, Tom White's open source project is exactly that kind of similar DevOps where you could actually program on EC2 Hadoop. It's all about spinning up those those clusters. So, uh, so we're is that that particular project is going well. Uh, Big Top is more of a stack testing and integration. So, I agree. I mean, I think Hadoop is implicitly saying ops is standard, a mandate, not even an option. It's so, you guys have been focusing on adoption at this event. You know, talking to a lot of the the, the consumers of, of Hadoop. Um, we've been talking, John, for over a year now about the gap between cloud service providers and the traditional IT shops. And you know, the latter, the traditional IT shops are doing more with less, they're dealing with budget cuts. In 2008, some of them deal with 50 to 70% budget cuts. And meanwhile, you got cloud service providers, they're investing, they're, 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 they're automating, and there's this widening gap. And my question to you guys is, you know, do you think that um, that will continue? Uh, we can the traditional enterprises keep up in the big data context? Or are we going to see that that is a barrier to adoption, that lack of funding? I, I don't think so. I don't think they can keep up. I really don't. I'm, I'm, I'm more convinced of it than ever. Uh, it, it, you know, when we talk about the internet companies in particular, they're engineering, they're engineering centric organizations and this whole concept of developing on the fly, like developing internal tools to be able to manage all this data and then taking those tools and open sourcing them for the community and then that building into more tools, you know, and more development. That is going to be a very tough model to beat. Yeah, so so I guess I guess from that we could predict, you know, the ascendancy obviously of the cloud service providers and people who sell to them and the impact that that's going to have in terms of disrupting the just, existing order. I'll just let me add one more thing. I mean, just look at this post I wrote this morning about SAP's new online uh, mobile app store. Here's what you need to do. You, you go to their mobile app store, you get a demo of the app, okay? Then you, get, then you, get, then you contact a sales rep or, an, or someone inside sales. Then they do a consulting uh, work with you to determine what integrations that you need. You follow that up then with the app that you get six weeks later, yeah. okay? That, that, that's it's gotta a, be iTunes -like. That's a totally different model. Now, yeah. of course these companies are, are integrated into SAP, right? Yeah. But that's just, that just shows, that that's just, I think, a stark example of, of the difference. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that clearly is slow. Yeah. I mean, it should be instant. Yeah. It's a long way to go for SAP, but and SAP's cutting edge. I mean, it's not like they're yeah. slouches. No, they're not. Yeah, they're one of the first companies to yeah. even do that. They're the leaders. So, yeah. <laughs> so, hey, golf yeah. clap. Hey, yeah. good yeah. try. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know. The contrast nice. is just striking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I slightly disagree, though. I, th I think the, the incumbent enterprise companies are, are going to catch up. It, it'll take some time, and they'll, they'll do it through uh, acquisitions. And 
you, you're already see, starting to see it happen. You know, Dell is doing interesting things with open source right now. And you know, they just a few years ago, uh, just a, like a year ago, they were thought of more as a hardware company. They're still thought of more as a hardware company. They're doing really interesting things with open source now. And uh, you, you know, it's just a, a killer be killed environment right well, now. Well, just I to clarify, we were talking about yeah. the difference between traditional IT shops yeah. and cloud service providers. Right. I think I would agree with what Clint is saying. The, the big yeah. guys to buy their way in. They got balance. Yeah, well, the, IT, the, the old IT shops are going to have to adapt to it. That, and in some ways, yeah, they'll, they'll start getting cloud services or they'll start building private clouds and they'll use Puppet and uh, VMware and, and, and that sort of thing. And they'll, they'll have to catch up because they don't really have a choice. And here's how we increasingly look at it. It's just this race to the middle. On the one side, you have these, you know, the old enterprise legacy technology companies who are trying to be innovative. They're trying to be young. They want to show that they they can play with the cool cats, right? The cool cats, right? They want to be established. They want to be <laughs> trusted, right? So they're both racing to the middle. And so you're starting to see companies from the old legacy world who are starting to innovate. I would say HP Vertica is an example of that. You know, the w ability to do data visualization with, with, with a company like Tableau. I would argue that Salesforce is, 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 is really moving toward the middle too. So I really think there's going to be this race in the middle and who- Who's and not who, moving? Who, so that's a great point. I mean, because I, I think you're seeing innovation movement. You're seeing some tactics um, in that strategy, but who's not moving? Because people who don't move are dead, basically is what we're saying. So who are some of the players that you can say are not moving fast enough or maybe a little slower, or actually standing still. Can you name any, or? You know, I, I can't think offhand of anyone who is moving, who, who isn't moving. Uh, I mean, IBM, who is, you know, they're an old uh, giant, but they're, you know, they're picking up companies like Nitezza, and uh, you know, Citrix is doing, uh, you know, they're pretty traditional, but at the same time, they're, they're acquiring companies, they're doing new stuff with virtualization. Uh, VMware has just rolled out some new DevOps tools a couple weeks ago. We, we wrote about that on SiliconANGLE. Uh, I mean, every company wants to be a part of this. I think it's a perception issue, and I, I would I, I would point to Oracle. Um, you know, to some extent, and I and I think maybe Microsoft, and to some extent too. But they're showing a lot of innovation as well. So what do you guys think of the story? So when we before we came up here, we were talking about some storylines and that we were kind of watching. One was the Hortonworks Cloudera thing and MapR, you know, the different approaches. Any feedback in the hallways, any buzz about that? Is it kind of kind of watered down? Is it was overhyped up? Or what's your observation from that that big storyline? You know, the you know, it's Cloudera's show, and so people aren't talking about it that much. Um, I have been hearing about HPCC here, and uh, that you know, as, as a complete alternative to Hadoop, people are talking about it. People are talking about Hortonworks. MapR is here. Uh, you know trying to give away free iPads or something, so I mean. Well, I mean, this is Cloudera show, but it's really not, it's not Cloudera world, it's I, Hadoop right. world, so I, that's uh, an interesting debate. Should this yeah. be Cloudera's show? Yeah, I heard, be, yeah. I heard one interesting feedback about Cloudera, that it's, some are confused about their marketing. You know, are they a services company? Are they a consulting company? What about their distro? So where where are they focusing and how are they going to make their money? So we clarified that. So we had everyone on. We had Albanese today. We, we put that hard question to everyone. Clear, CDH is absolutely 100% open. That's CDH is Cloudera's distribution for Hadoop. Now, for the people who aren't students of this sector who were just new, we've been following this, Cloudera used to actually call their stuff Apache Hadoop. What Apache did about a year ago, they said, whoa, whoa, you can't use the Apache name. So what they had to do, they had a big branding decision internally at Cloudera. I think CDH kind of creates some confusion. It implies, it, what is, what is, it's Cloudera's distribution for Hadoop, CDH. But it's really still 100% Apache open mm -hmm. source. It's a trademark brand issue with Apache. So that's one thing that kind of, I think screwed up Cloudera a little bit was, you know, they had to go out and private label, not private label, but branded them, and they wanted to have some sort of branding. So CDH is, their distribution for Hadoop, their distro, as they say, and that's their version. It's a completely 100% open source. They're only charging for the enterprise uh, suite, which includes the management console and support. Um, and they charge for training, and I'm, I'm sure they charge for but, consulting. But to be clear, Ed said, we are a software company. So they're scaling yeah. the, distri the distro. They're creating their own distribution that's 100% open source that contributed to Apache, and they contribute to Apache, it's just their distribution of Apache Hadoop. And that's their route to scaling then, through yeah. the distribution. Their route to scaling is bundling and that in, and the NetApp deal, I think, is a, a telegraph of the channel strategy, which is 
take our distro, certified distro, we're gonna call it that, it's still open, and then they're buying the enterprise suite uh, or wholesaling the enterprise suite from Cloudera, so NetApp is paying a wholesale for the, mon uh, the charge version, and they get the distro, it's free. So they can go with Apache Hadoop, but they just choose Cloudera's distribution. That's it. And now NetApp resells that, pay the wholesale to Cloudera, and then NetApp will wrap whatever services around it, and that's essentially their go-to-market for the distribution. But as to your question about the, the narrative there, it, it just, I, I don't see it playing out much here. Uh, people just aren't really, people who are here just aren't talking a whole lot about Cloudera versus Hortonworks. Uh, if, if, if it's playing out at all, it's playing out in the, the question about whether there's going to be a forking of Hadoop, and that, that kind of plays over to MapR because their version of Hadoop is a little different and uh, from, from what Cloudera is doing, where, where they're just building on top of. What is the, the MapR? I know you guys had a post on MapR, um, just went up Clint. I mean, people are saying to me, MapR's got a chance, a serious chance, because EMC's backing it up. It's just a mm -hmm. proprietary distribution. Um, I mean, MapR is a fork. Right, I mean, it's, it's not a fork. It's a completely different product. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's, 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 <laughs> but but there's no the, 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 the Cloudera versus Hortonworks to me anyway is not a fork. Do you guys agree, or do you see that as a fork? Oh, Cla yeah, Cloudera and Hortonworks are not forks. Yeah, Map, I, mean, I, I, granted, I think MapR does count as a fork. I haven't talked to them about it, so, so I, I don't want to. So I don't want to go out on. John's right. I mean, technically, it's well, not a fork. But, is okay. in the community. But MapR is completely yeah, rewrite yeah. from scratch. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, I just call it something different. It's a completely yeah. different product. Okay. It's proprietary so, uh, MapReduce. Right, so I mean, I mean, the amount of forking that's going on with Cloudera's management suite is, you know, I mean, that's to me, that's not an issue. There's I mean, no the forking core, because they're all contributing to Apache. See, that's the thing. Everything right. is going to the Apache right. server. So now... So I just don't see the Hortonworks, forking issue today. Hortonworks. I guess you could, today. the fragmentation is more of, I guess, what we, what we should say rather than forking, but... So, so let's handicap this thing, because we've been doing it all week. You've got, you know, the, the, the I've said, the, the guy who's number one is going to make a ton of dough, number two is going to make some dough, and number three maybe make a little bit of money, and there's no fourth place, right? So you got Cloudera, you got EMC and, and Greenplum and MapR, and you got Hortonworks. What do you guys see as the sort of st position of each of those horses now, if you had to handicap it? You know, I would also look at IBM Natiza, too. I mean... As a as a, uh, a a Hadoop distribution platform. Yeah, and I think they're a little bit dis different because they want to play from all sides. They don't want to just use one. They're 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 willing to work with multiple distros. And I think that they they've got a their approach. I think is is interesting because they want to make it dead simple. That is their goal at IBM. And yeah, but then are, are they trying to? So the, of the three I mentioned, the three I mentioned are trying to be the data operating system, right? Yep. The data OS, the right. next, okay. you know, the Windows of data. Right, so if, if if IBM's doing that, that's you know let's put them in that camp. But right now, I think those are the three big ones. I don't ones. think IBM's Maybe trying to Nexus do that. Is the other yeah. one. I don't think so either. Right? Yeah, IBM is the real loser. EMC is the real loser in this show well, because I mean, they're not here. Well. We'll, we'll talk about that too, but LexisNexis, you would maybe put in that yeah, camp. Yeah, because they're not doing Hadoop, but they're doing something so similar that I yeah, I would put them in that race. So, so smart money's on Cloudera. They've they've got a head start. They've got customers. They're they've the got favorite. resellers. Yeah. Uh, so you know the, the smart money. You know you're, you're gonna you're gonna bet on Cloudera. Uh, Hortonworks is so new to the market. But anyway, they have deep expertise. Uh, but they're they're new, so they're they're a know. player but, but, by but default given their contribution yeah, and they, their I mean, they've got a, they've got a real shot at being number one. But uh, you know, Cloudera's got got the advantage right now just for, by being first. But we, yeah. Mapar has a has an uphill battle ahead, even with EMC. Even with the EMC, I mean, I mean that's my a, argument that's a good, is that that's they, a good, but uh, they have a product, they have customers, they got a distribution channel. I would think near sure, term, yeah, I mean, but they don't have customers business. using MapR and, and Greenplum. There's very yeah, few. Yeah, they're they're not out of the running by any means. But it's an uphill battle is what he said. I bet you they but go compared, ahead. yeah, com compared okay. to Cloudera and, and well, Hortonworks. Okay, so I think yeah. we're all in agreement. Cloudera is definitely the favorite. Yeah, who's the second favorite? Hortonworks, Hortonworks. or EMC? I'd say Hortonworks. I go. But here's here, I would go EMC. We were talking about this. We were talking about this last night. It depends on the odds, I guess. Yeah. Do you see anyone out there? I picked the Patriots last week and they <laughs> lost, so you know. At twenty to one, I'd pick EMC. At three to one, probably not. Okay, right, go ahead. But uh, you know, we were talking about this last night. Who who do we see out there doing the smartest, most elegant marketing? Do you see anyone? Hort well, messaging wise, I think Hortonworks yeah, PR agree. has been fantastic. So yeah, I would take that uh, into and, consideration. And, and again, I yeah. think EMC's marketing is fantastic. Cloud meets big data. I mean, EMC John Furrier really started that, but then the EMC. Yeah. 
pick that up. EMC marketing is the best. Um, I mean, right? Hortonworks I mean, PR is the best. Hortonworks doesn't have any marketing because they have nothing to market. And Cloudera's um, got street cred. Yeah. Not yet. Cloudera's playing the um, word of mouth. Mm. We're in the community. They're going to win by having all the soldiers on their team. I'm waiting for that super marketer to come out and, and remember, really take and really, not, and really and really and really really take the market and say and and you get that mind share. And I'm just I'm not well, seeing it. Quite there's yet. a lot. Cloudera, of, Cloudera does not have a VP of marketing. They do not have a CMO. They've been looking for someone for a bunch of months now. They do need one. Um, they have PR now. They have a good PR team. And, and, a little bit confusing. They've been they've been holding their message back, but now here they're messaged up. I mean, I gotta give Cloudera a hand on this one. They're messaged up beautifully. Yeah, yeah no um, doubt. They're hitting all their marks, but their marketing is is simply we're just gonna be good with our product and let the product speak for itself. I personally think they need more than that. I think they need to play, you know, uh, the leadership role. Thought leadership is big. They're number one. They have all the horses in the in the stable with Amr Bakar, the data science team, Amr Hodala, Mike Olson. I mean, you know, Mike Olson is a, a, a database guy. He knows yeah. that old business. He knows the new business. You got Amr Awadala, who's a rock star. Jeff Hammerbacher, you saw him on theCUBE. He's fantastic, yeah. he's smart, he understands data. And their whole team is like that, right? And, uh, so Cloudera has the horses. That's so I would bet on Cloudera yeah. simply on the fact that they have the horses and they could continue to lead. But I would so tell it's you, theirs to screw up at this point. I, and I, I, again, I would agree with that, but I will tell you, I, I would not count EMC out of this. I was at a CIO, EMC CIO conference a couple weeks ago, one of the few few individuals that was invited at the, you know, that wasn't a customer, and I talked to a lot of customers, and there are numerous uh, green plum proofs of con proof of concepts going on out there. Now, they didn't necessarily all include MapR, but I just, I see them finally getting their act together. EMC Salesforce knows how to sell hardware and they're packaging it as an appliance. It's a good packaging strategy. We saw that from, from NetApp. So again, I would not count them out. I but wouldn't either. I mean, I yeah. think EMC, this is one of the things that I'm watching. The thing that I'm watching in all this is the indifference of the customer base because there's a lot of diversity in the kinds of solutions that are going to be rolling out. You might have people who love Cloudera in a certain area. You're going to have EMC customers that might have a different requirement. So it's, it's to me, I don't know what the indifference is to either switching or not. So yeah. to me, that's the factor that I'm watching. Clearly, there are advantages for everyone involved, but you know, again, taking Cloudera aside as the yeah. leader. We could have a whole other conversation about this, but but I really like IBM, and you know, I'll just leave it at that. Forget yeah. So so <coughs> now and don't, and I, I definitely wouldn't count LexisNexis. I really I really like IBM, but well now so why do you like IBM? Because IBM I, we haven't included them in this discussion only because I'm saying they're not going for the OS of the of data, but maybe they are. Maybe they will come in. And well, go for that. I, I think you need to look at everything that IBM's doing and their analytics approach. I think is really really smart. Hadoop is really at the base of their you know the base the base of their strategy. Yeah. It, it really. They've really embraced right there. open source, they've and, embraced the Hadoop. And if you look at some of their, their products that they have, that they've developed, so, such as like uh, uh, InfoStreams, right? I mean, very very good technology, big sheets, you know, which is a wonderful, insights. you know, which is wonderful technology, for, you know, for really kind of reducing kind of that, the sentiment of social analysis. I saw one demo that they did where they actually, the, the technology was used to pick uh, um, Puss in Boots, as the number one film 18 months ago, based upon the sentiment analysis they did, they correlated with advertising dollars that were spent by DreamWorks in the amount of 18 million dollars. Those are the kind of examples that I want to uh, that, that I think are really powerful. But I think you also need to look at IBM's history of their of their of their acquisitions. They have been focusing on analytics. And That's so a really good point. Cognos, you know, Natiza, SPSS, mm -hmm. right? Cognos, uh, yeah. uh, Cognos, Natiza, and. A rich open source culture. I mean, IBM, uh -huh. Steve Mills basically said, hey, I'm going to spend a couple billion dollars to neutralize Microsoft's right. advantage, and IBM did that. You know, yeah, that, IBM was big in open know, source. I mean, I, I agree, IBM's got some oh, work good to do. Call they actually are not doing a good job. You talk about marketing, they are really blowing it, because IBM. Smarter yeah, planet. Well, that's a high level good, marketing good, plan that's company wide, but specifically the big data, they really got to up the up their messaging because they're really left out of the conversation. I mean, look at Alex, you know, just brought them up. He's like, okay, that's a good conversation. They're not even in there. I mean, they had um, their, their event um, <clears throat> just two weeks ago, and but that's it. Goes, it. I think it goes back what, to information, on, it goes, demand? It information goes, on demand. And then once that's over, the conversation continues without them. And just but, I, but I think it goes back to the, what I was saying earlier, too. I, I don't, in terms of marketing, I don't see any clear winner. I don't see EMC as a clear winner. I don't see Cloudera as a clear winner. I think that it's so that this market is so young. I mean, I think well, HP. We were, we I think HP blew it at Discover 
with, with Leo getting up there talking about plumbing when he could have been pushing really big yeah. visionary themes like big data. I think that would have unsettled HP, the market. HP blew. Well, they blew with cloud and they're also blowing with big data. But they, you know, I was talking to Colin Mahoney at Vertica uh, last night uh, at dinner. Um, he was saying there's some big things coming out. So I'm looking forward to seeing HP. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think the, the, the jury's still out on who's going to win. But here's the wild card for me. Hey, I can use EMC as an example. I love that marketing campaign, Cloud Meets Big Data. They nailed it, very relevant. Um, the problem is, is that in the open source world that we're living in, um, community participation matters. So for example, IBM is not here. EMC is not here. That matters. Yeah, let's so, talk about that a little bit. So I, I think that's a big I mean, factor. Oracle is here. Oracle's here. NetApp is here. Um, well, let's go. Cisco yeah. is here. Juniper's right. not here. So, but you know, if you're not present, you just Hadoop world. Well, wait, wait. So no. you're saying de facto that Hadoop world, I mean, and I'm asking you this, you think Hadoop world is the m most important big data event or one of the top yes. three or yes, five? Yes, I think. And, it, and even though it is a user conference? It's interesting thought. I think I mean, it's a practitioner I think this is the most important yeah, event right. mainly because the people building the industry but, are here. And I've seen this before in other industry movements like client server. The conferences that matter are the ones that have the participation of the people actually building the industry that is embryonic in big data, right? So, I mean, again, last year, this conference size and makeup was different, and the people who are getting excited are the ones like us who are present at creation and are actually doing the work, right? So the, in the sessions, they're packed, and uh, they're asking thoughtful questions, and these are the guys who really have questions, and they're really doing some good work. This isn't like a, a puffery, you know, smoking the, you know, the peace pipe and you know, payola conference, um, where there's vendor and vendor sh spiels going on, um, yeah. like other conferences. Yeah. Part of the question about who's uh, who's going to win, I, you know, we should maybe talk about who should win, and I don't think that's clear yet who should win, and I, I think that's part of why we can't really answer who's going to win. I mean, who should win won't necessarily be who does win, well, but there, it, it's really not clear yet who in the, in the long run is going to have the best, most mature product. Well, well, Cloudera has the, has the most mature, Cloudera and HPCC have the most mature products right now, but it, it's still so early. Why I like Cloudera, so that's a good point. So who should win is kind of a good way to frame it. So to me, I'll just, it's hard to say vendor at this point, but I'll say the approach that should win is an approach that provides ubiquity of a platform that enables developers to build products fast with distribution and monetization. Meaning, hey, I have an idea, I want to serve a market, there's a market for it, there's demand, I want to build a product and sell that product and make money. That's how it works in business, right? So I think the Cloudera messaging points to that. Their distribution deals uh, with NetApp, with SGI, um, they're enabling the marketplace. Um, Ed Albanese basically said, we want to be out of the direct sales business. We want to go indirect. I got to tell you, that, that, that's a good story. If they can pull that off, that's worthy of winning. And they're already in the lead for that. So, you know, so I still that's kind of philosophical, but. I, I still contend, I wonder if you guys could weigh in on this. It's, uh, at some point, I don't know if that's three months, six months, two years, Cloudera has got to demonstrate that it can transition all its goodwill, like at Edmunds.com, who's using Cloudera software, to actual selling something. Yeah. Uh, Edmunds is not paying Cloudera, as an example, and many, many customers aren't. So they have to figure out how to eventually do it. Now, I don't think it has to be tomorrow, because they just raised 40 million. They can hang in there for yeah. a while. John and I were having this discussion. It really wasn't a debate, because I think we agreed. But at some point, they've got to go from, okay, we're raising the, you know, the value of the company and increasing the awareness of the company to, we got to start selling stuff. What do you guys think about that? My question is, why do they need, why did they need $40 million? Well, I think that I, 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 my answer would be because they're up against guys like EMC and IBM. And, 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 and they uh, haven't started scaling the sales of their product. Yeah, they can't. The sale, they can't yeah, they're investing it in sales right. and marketing and uh, reseller partnerships mostly. Yeah. I and, think that's, and that's they could. Yeah, they I mean, it's it an up that. round. And so okay, so uh, I just saw, the, saw that Mike Olson's in the house. He's going to come on the queue for kind of a wrap up. But before we bring on Mike, I want to ask you guys, uh, you guys have been doing a great job. Um, covering the event, yeah. content's been fantastic. Uh, Post-event, what's on your uh, radar? What is, what's the action items for you guys after this event? What's uh, any kind of epiphanies here? And obviously we talked about DevOps. What else uh, is on your radar? I'm going to take some pictures of the chickens over the weekend. You know, I'm going to uh, <laughs> have some eggs, you know, yeah. uh, scrambled uh, eggs. I think this, we're coming into the end of the year. It's going to be fun to kind of look at this past year. I, uh, 
looking at some of the, you know, who are the top players in data analytics? Who are the top players who are really kind of, you know, building those developer communities? Who are the ones who will really make the play in, in 2012? I, that's, I think, going to be the focus for the rest, for the next several weeks. Yeah, uh, to be, I guess, I'm a little more specific, uh, Big Top is something I'm, that's on my list to look uh, more deeply into. Uh, I need to do, spend some more time looking into R and Revolution Analytics. I think that uh, they're, you know, they're doing really interesting things. They're they're on the edge of, of what data scientists are actually using in order to, to do work with big data. So I, uh, so I think that those are two particular areas. Yeah. To, to yeah. Data if visualization. I, if I'm, if I'm going to be particular, I'd say you know I'm, I'm still working. I'm on this post on, you know, is is Hadoop ready for the Fortune 1000 and. This this event really kind of helped me. Uh, yeah, I think we got some ideas. On I that. think the mission is clear: cloud meets big data. You know, for us, it's cloud virtualization, VMware. That's going to play into it. Obviously, with Hadoop, we got Cloudera and all these guys and analytics. So, all right, guys, thanks for coming on. Thank appreciate you. it. Great nice event. Nice job, uh, we're going to wrap this up, uh, but uh, appreciate it. Good work. Good job and this week. Great thanks. job, you Great guys. Work. Thank you. Okay, we're live in New York City. As are our top guys, the bloggers out there doing the scouring, getting stories, talking up to everybody, getting briefed, Alex Williams and Clint Finley, uh, SiliconAngle.com, exclusive. Great